What's up guys, Matt here. So, today's video, I'm going to be talking about some of my school experiences. I, uh, this is definitely, uh, some of it is hard for me to talk about, so bear with me. So I guess I'll start with uh, elementary school, of course. Uh, well, as we all know, you know, elementary school is pretty straightforward. You know, you just go to school, you just, you know, you play at recess. It's, you know, not a not a big thing. Then you go home. Um, so that was that was all good. I was also, uh, at, during that time, I was also dealing with a lot of uh, health issues. So I, I was, I think I was, um, at around that time, I think I was in the hospital more than I was in school. So, you know, it, it was, it, it was all right. Uh, I have a, um, a learning disability, which means, um, I have trouble keeping up with, uh, how, basically how other kids will learn. It would take me a, a long go to learn it. Uh, I always struggled with math, uh, social studies, science, that kind of thing. Um, I mean, heck, even even talking, I struggled with. I had to go to speech therapy, therapy and physical therapy, and I had to. Man, it was it was a lot <laughs> at we you know, at young age, but. Uh, but again, you know, I always, you know, I had great parents and I always had, you know, friends and not very many, but I had, you know, enough, you know, to get me, to help me out through, through the day and make sure that I had a, a decent life, childhood, I guess. Uh, when I got to junior high, um, it was... Seventh grade was not that bad. Uh, I mean, it was, you know, again, pretty straightforward. Um, I had this, uh, I remember I had this reading class. Um, and it was a special education class. So it was, you know, I had learned how to read books and stuff, and it was, the teachers were really nice, and they were awesome, and they were just, I mean, they, they had, uh, I mean, they were patient, they were very helpful, they were respectful, they were, uh, you know, we, we had, we kind of had our own little system going, uh, you know, back then we had portables, so, uh, you know, it was in a, it, our class was in a portable and, uh, you know, like I said, it was very, it wasn't too bad. In fact, it was actually pretty, pretty good. It used to be one of my, I wouldn't say favorite classes, but it was, it was a decent class. I, I did not mind, uh, going to it. Um, let's see, about my, the, I don't know if it was the end of seventh grade or my eighth great deal. Um, I have been uh, told that we were going to be getting a new teacher. And uh, I thought, oh, you know, okay. Well, uh, the new teacher came in, and I'll never forget this day. She comes in and she's got this really, really strict attitude going on. She's got this, like, kind of like a strict, kind of military type, um, what do you call it? Well, yeah, the attitude going on. And uh, I think, I don't know, I, I, think, I think I was, uh, I think my, one of my classmates, I think, said something funny or, or I, or anyway, I, I think I laughed at something that, and, uh, it was in the, she was, it was in the middle of her talking. <laughs> Let's just say she did not like that. 
uh, that I that I giggled or laughed, and she was like, she starts like kind of, she looks at me, she's like, she's like, Matt, did you hear me? And I remember looking over at her, her eyes were all big, and she's just like, cause she she starts uh, barking all these orders like. Uh, this is what we're gonna do. This is this is we're gonna be doing book reports. We're gonna be doing, you know, you, you're gonna do this. You're gonna do that. You and you're not to do this. You know, I mean, it was, and I I think I remember thinking, wow, you know, who does this lady think she is? You know, because I mean, this is a a, a junior high school for one. This is a classroom. This is you know more kids. You know, more, more, you know, and and number one book reports. I, we never did book reports, and um, and I thought, oh man, this is going to be one heck of a year or rest of the year. Well. I, when you were in special education, you get what's called an IEP manager, and that means that the that teacher is in charge of what classes you take. Uh, basically, making sure that the classes that you take are not too hard for you. And so, of course, you know, the beginning, I thought, wow, you know, okay, great. You know, that's great that I have that, that support, that ab, ab, somebody that can advocate, advocate for me and, um, and do that. I thought that, that was great. Well, and this is in, I think this is in 08. And, uh, but she, she still had this really bad, strict military type attitude, just a real bad attitude, and I thought, man, you know, what is, what is with her, you know, and I mean, you couldn't talk to her about anything, because she would just, I mean, she would snap your head off, uh, you know, and, um, I mean, you know, the, the, the classes that you had, that's the way it was, and that's what you, you did, well, that's how you, I mean, it was, you know, and, uh, for a while, I mean, it was it was rough, but it wasn't that that rough. But uh, in my in, let's see, my ninth grade year, so about about two thousand nine now. Um, yeah, this this year is definitely hard for me to talk about, but I feel like it needs to be said. Um, I had been, uh, she, this, this teacher that I'm talking about, she, she was my IEP manager. And I also had paraeducators. So, which means they were supposed to help me with my schoolwork, something that I, I, so that if I didn't understand something, um, she could, they could help me. Well, she started to have these paraeducators kind of be like I call it like a like a parole officer because they would start to want to follow me around. Even if I wasn't in class, they wanted to follow me around. They wanted to, you know, escort me to my classes. They wanted to uh they wanted to just go way beyond what they were originally there for, to do. And, um, well, I became very, I knew it was wrong, and I, I became very angry about it. I became very upset, became very res resentful, and I became very defiant. And just, I mean, I, I, I became one of those difficult, angry junior high kids, you know, it was, it was bad, and, uh, you know, because when you're young like that, and you'll be tossed around by these adults like a pinball machine, and there's nothing you can do about it, because you're a kid, you know, and, but at the same time, you know what's going on is wrong, but again, you're, you're a kid, so you can't, 
I mean, you, you, you got nothing. <laughs> and um, I knew that. But I think knowing that even enraged me more. Uh, situation got very out of control. Um, I, the way I handled it, I'm not proud of the way that I ha always handled it. Um, I think maybe if I handled it differently, it might have possibly gone a different way, but highly unlikely. Uh, I remember this one paraeducator that I had, the teacher wanted, this teacher wanted her to actually write notes down about my behavior, about my attitude, where I went, where I, what I was doing, everything. And when I found that out, I mean, it, I was, uh, I lost it. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I, I'd be, if I wasn't yelling, I was crying. And uh, it was a very, very hard, I remember it was a very hard time for me. And uh, I knew my parents, my parents were aware of the situation. Um, they knew it was wrong too, but they, they didn't really, I don't think they really knew, I, I don't really think they knew that it was bad to the point to take any kind of action. So I think it was just kind of, you know, and, and meanwhile, I'm, I'm like really pissed off. So I'm being a difficult kid. So, I mean, it, you know, and, um, so it got to, it got to the point where it, it would escalate, kept escalate, escalating to the point where the teacher, this teacher would, uh, not want me in the classroom. In fact, there was a, um, uh, conference room that was like quite right across from the classroom and she would have my paraeducator, uh, have me go in this, this conference room and, and, and that was, I, I was to stay there. So now I'm in this conference room, I'm away from everybody, which I hated. I hated that. I hated not being allowed. I hated being in a room, um, feeling completely closed off. You know, I was shoved in a corner. I was forgotten about. I was, I didn't matter. Well, of course, that enraged me even more. So, of course, things escalated because I, I wasn't going to stand for it. And again, my parents were aware of, of this and... My dad at the time was still working with, was still an air traffic controller, so he couldn't just always, you know, he, he couldn't always just drop what he was doing and just come and, you know, deal with deal with what I was going through, you know. And, uh, but it, it did get to the point where, you know, my dad, you know, realized that this was bad and that it needed to be dealt with. Uh, you know, we had had several meetings, staff meetings, uh, of course, I, that I was, I was involved in, which I don't know why, because nobody, I mean, nobody's going to listen to me. I'm a kid, you know, so, um, which is exactly what happened. And it only made me more angry being in those meetings, because, I mean, you know, everything was my fault, you know. You know, I was being difficult, you know. I was the problem child, you know. And um, being treated differently and being discriminated, feeling like I was discriminated against and feeling like I was, like, you know, meant nothing and all of that. I mean, that was an understatement at that time. And um, like I said, do, am I proud of how I handled the situation? No, I'm not, because, uh, I mean, it got really bad, and I, I, I could have, I mean, it got to the point where my anger could have... Um, 
I mean, I could have very well made a life-changing mistake. I mean, you hear all about these, you know, kids that assaults and, and, and shootings and, and, and all of that that went on. Um, I'm not going to get into that, of course, but uh, in detail at least, but I can tell you that kids that are being treated that way and they feel that way um, and then they end up taking a drastic life-changing mistake. I can tell you somebody needed help. Somebody tried to uh, say something. It was not heard. And um, nobody paid attention. And that's all I got to say about that. And nobody paid attention until it was too late. And I, of course, I never, you know, I mean, no, I never had any, of course, I wasn't going to, never was going to act like it. But as a kid, when you, when you, you're not, really able to logically handle situations. I mean, you you know, you're not, you're, like I said, you're a kid, so you're not mature, you're not, you're not, you can't problem solve things in a, in a mature uh, way, uh, in a way that it should be handled. So uh, I definitely wanted to leave, that's for sure. I wanted to, you know, get away from the school and I never wanted to come back. I can tell you that. I mean, I don't, I mean, um, definitely deep, very dark thoughts came into play. Very angry. Um, well, I mean, it, it affected me so bad, I, the trust I had in people was totally gone. The respect I had for people were, were, were gone. Uh, I was always getting yelled at, always getting detentions, uh, always getting the school security called on me, which, just to let you know, that security guard, he was, I mean, they called him so mu in so much on me that me and, the, and that security guard he was my only friend throughout that whole school. He ended up being my only friend and my only, you know, the only guy that would, you know, stand up for me and never ever t uh, treated me or, or, or talked to me like I was some kind of, you know, really bad person or some kind of mental idiot. So I, I think he helped a lot with getting me getting through these hard times. I think he actually saw what was going on. Um, but at the end of the day, he had a job to do, so he couldn't, I mean, he had to do his job, you know. They called him on me because I'm, you know, I'm upset and they, it, it, that's that's what you do. You know, he had, he had to, you know, um, and then I would, you know, of course, go to his office and we would talk and he would, you know, I, I, he would help me to calm down. And But, I mean, it happened a lot and it was not, not good. Um, man, it emotionally it affected me. I, it still affects me today. Uh, emotionally, I... Um, I took a lot of um, years of just not wanting to be around anybody and not even wanting to, I mean, I was just going to be in my house, in my room, and wasn't going to talk to anybody, wasn't going to go anywhere. I mean, I was, it was that point. And, um, you know, of course, I always have to remind myself that I'm not there anymore. I'm not in that situated situation anymore. I'm um, 
you know, I'm an adult now, and uh, I can make my own decisions, and um, I am able to accept it, and I can move on, and um, I definitely live a pretty good life, but I'll never forget. I mean, I'll, I'll, I remember everybody that was involved I remember every incident that happened. I remember their names. I remember every single thing. Um, in fact, I I cringe every time I uh, go past the uh, go go past the junior, the junior high school. Um, but uh, again, I have to remind myself that I'm not there anymore, and. Um, I'm I'm good right now. I'm really I'm really good. But every once in a while, um, you know, it, it get it gets to me. It, it's still today. It still gets to me. Well, like, I think about it. You know, I think about it a lot. It's not very many people realize how much that affected me emotionally. You know, everyone, especially my my friend or my my parents or, or you know my my. My friend that I, my well, I I call him my best friend, but he, he was, um, he was in the classroom as well. He was there, so he knew what. I mean, he, he was the one that was always sticking up for me. But you know, he did what he could, but you know, in fact, to be more than it, more than than people realize, you know, they tell me to move on, get over it, forget about it, all this, and I mean, you know, I see a counselor, you know, right now, uh, which helps. I have been going to counseling on and off for years, and uh, to deal with my uh, depression and anxiety and all of that. Uh, it, it helps. I mean, it's not something that it's, you know, oh, in a week, you know, everything will be great. No, no, it takes, you know, I mean, you got to keep at it, and it takes years, you know. And um, it did help, but I think when I, there was a short point where I reached that I, I, I think I couldn't handle, handle a lot emotionally, so I think that's where, um, a lot of my drinking came in, and uh, I just had to make a decision, you know, how I was going to move forward. You know, if I was going to move forward and just continue to be angry all the time or and, and dwell on things that are either over or, or that I don't have control over, or, you know, was I going to try and live the best life that I possibly can moving forward? Um, I mean, I'm still, you know, I still struggle, I mean, with depression today. I mean, I, you know, I want, you know, I, even before this whole predicament started, you know, I was trying to get a job, I was trying to, you know, meet people, I was trying to, you know, I mean, and, and none of it was happening, so it was very uh, a dark time for me. I mean, you know, and uh, so now, I mean, I'm still, you know, I've I've done a lot. I've I've got gotten very far, but I still, I'm still working on myself. I'm still um, rebuilding myself, and. Um, Again, that's going to take a long time, but I'm definitely much further and much better than I used to be, and uh, I, I'm i very grateful for that. I'm very grateful for the people, the very good, the very positive people that are still in my life today that have not left. Um, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for my dog, my dog Max, and... Uh, you know, I'm grateful for everything that I have now, um, and uh, you know, I'm just gonna keep moving forward. I'm just gonna keep doing doing what I can. Um, you know, and uh, so um, now when I got into high school, 
It was, um, I mean, it was good as far as the, you know, the, the students and even the principal. I liked the principal. I liked the, the, the other students there. I made, a, I made a, a lot more friends there than I actually did in, in junior high. So that was, it was, and I still keep in contact with them today. So, uh, you know, I'm grateful to, to have that. But, man, I tell you, you know, when, you, when I went into high school again, I was still in special education, which was good. I needed that, you know, but... Um, I had this, this you know, teacher, and uh, she was my IEP manager, and the same thing happened, the same concept, you know. They would instruct these paraeducators that were there to help me with my schoolwork, and they, will, they would uh, want them to um, They would want them to follow me around. They would want to keep tabs on me about, you know, what I'm doing, you know, where I'm going, uh, you know, because, again, it's, if anything happens to me, it's they'll, you know, they're liable for that. And I, I get that, but, you know, Treating me like I'm a mental idiot just because of my physical appearance is, it's just not right at all. And I do know, I am aware that there are several, hundreds, if not thousands, of kids that are physically different, that are going through the same thing, if not worse, uh, in their schools, in their uh, school systems. And so me doing this video, I want to make sure, I guess I want to help to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Because I have been aware that in some other states there have been other cases of that. So I advise parents to try and monitor that very closely. I know that it's hard when you're a walking parent and you can't be everywhere, and I get that. But it's very important because as we all know, school is a huge part of our childhood, huge part of our lives. We cannot allow that kind of behavior be to happen. We cannot allow any kind of mistreat or discrimination or any kind of um, stereotype to happen and I mean definitely do what you gotta do I mean I, it's because we're talking about you know kids lives you know emotionally I mean they're, they're gonna be whatever happens that's what they're gonna remember for the rest of their lives I'm 28 now, I graduated in 2011, and I can remember, like I said, I can remember everything that happened, all the names, all the incidents, everything, just like it was yesterday. And even though I'm at a, I'm at a much better place than I used to be, it's in now. It's still in now. So, um... Yeah, that, that's, that's all I got to say about that. It's just, you know, keep uh, keep your kids safe. Keep keep an eye on what's going on in their, in their education. Um, I know that it wasn't so bad in, in high school, uh, but when it would start, I would catch on very quickly, and I would make it very clear to my parents and the principal that this either ends 
or I will be back the next day. And my parents knew that, and I sure knew that. So I really, like I said, I really advise, you know, you to keep an eye on all that. So, but thank you for watching. Um, I very, I, I apologize that this was not uh, a very, uh, this was not another one of my uh, fun, uh, positive uh, videos. Um, but I felt like this needed to be said because, again, uh, this is still happening today. Lots of kids are going through it. Um, it, it, it just cannot happen. I know that things are, are completely different now because of this, of the COVID-19 predicament that we're in. So I know that, you know, everything's changed. Um, but still, keep an eye on, on what's going on and definitely make sure. Um, so stay safe. And uh, I will be back later.